guys welcome back let's continue with the topics so we'll discuss stationary airflow all right so basically stationary air if airflow is velocity of the air is uniform so that airflow when the velocity of the air is uniform is called a stationary airflow non stationary airflow is when generally it is turbulent gusty and there's an accelerating velocity of air that is not uniform so that is when it's non stationary airflow all right so next we'll discuss streamline and stream tubes streamline and stream tubes okay so let me draw an arrow foil okay so this part is called streamlines these are basically uh, stationary airflow when the particle of the air is uh, parallel both all the air i mean the air is parallel basically and uh, it's a stationary airflow and this is what we call is stream tubes stream tube is basically an imaginary tube made of streamlines so in a stream tube there are streamlines but it's an imaginary section of a cylindrical shape where the air flow is not going through the walls only through the center that is called a stream tube this is generally help us to find out uh, principles of flight in uh, when the there's a lift or drag and so on the stream tube principle help all right so next we'll do is 2d airflow that is two dimensional airflow okay two dimensional airflow is uh, when it is assumed that the wing is with the same aerofoil section along the entire span for example this is the aircraft and this it's a base it's a rectangular wing okay so there's no span wise uh, aerofoil section difference and uh, hence the dimension pressure differential or the flow over the wing is same throughout and there's no differential pressure flow so this is called 2d airflow 3d airflow that is three dimensional airflow so generally when aircraft some modern aircraft are designed they are not designed like this this was the earlier pattern now they are designed somewhat like this all right so three dimensional airflow is is the true airflow is the true airflow is the true airflow over an aircraft and it consists of a hypothetical 2d dimensional flow modified by various pressure differentials so basically it is like you know when you have a less chord here and a more chord here length so there's a span wise differential as well so this airflow when the differential span wise airflow comes into picture it's called three dimensional airflow all right so next we'll discuss aerodynamic forces on the surface it's an important topic aerodynamic forces on the surface so again i'll draw uh, an aerofoil okay and uh, we have a relative air flow say from the side all right so this is your relative air flow relative air flow and uh, as you can see 
this is the chord line from the leading edge to the trailing edge chord line this is the angle of attack angle of attack alpha okay and lift there are two forces that is generated one is lift another one is drag lift is a force acting always perpendicular to the relative airflow as you can see in the diagram lift is always perpendicular to the relative airflow and drag is in the same direction of the airflow all right so this is the lift and drag aerodynamic forces on the surface of the aerofoil when a relative airflow is hitting the aerofoil now this is generally for the climbing attitude as you can see climbing attitude you'll have lift more than the drag okay so now we'll have for level flight level flight lift and drag is almost same and when you have descent we'll have less lift but more drag descent okay and uh, during turns during turns during turns we'll have say this is the aircraft aerofoil I'm just drawing a rectangular aerofoil for the purpose alright so suppose the aircraft is turning left that means the lift generated here on the right wing is more and the drag generated on the left wing is more okay and if the lift if the aircraft is turning towards the right you have lift generating on the left wing more drag generating on the right wing more so hence these are the aerodynamic forces on the surface of the aerofoil when they are climbing level flying descent and turns all right so next we are going to do shape of the aerofoil shape of an aerofoil and the wing shape so this is an important uh, concept all right so we'll start off with the basics so let's draw uh, an aerofoil okay so this is called the leading edge leading edge this is called the trailing edge now there are few uh, imaginary lines that we consider one of them is chord line okay this is called the chord line chord line is an imaginary line joining the leading edge and trailing edge in a straight path is that clear this is called chord line now there is something called camber camber is basically a a curvature given to a wing on the upper and the lower surfaces depending so this is a camber of the aerofoil okay now there's something called camber line okay camber line this is your camber line leading edge trailing edge camber line is a line that is joining from leading edge to the trailing edge but equidistant from the upper and the lower surfaces of the aerofoil as you can see this both length is same here this is more and this is less camber line is equidistant from the upper and the lower surface okay now on this basis there are two types of aerofoils symmetric and non symmetric okay when symmetric aerofoil is something like this when the chord line and the camber line coincide okay when the chord line and the camber line coincide it is called a symmetric aerofoil and non symmetric is something like this what i've drawn here again i'll draw 
as you can see this is the leading edge this is the trailing edge when you draw the chord line it will be like something like this but when you draw the camber line it will be something like this camber line and this one is chord line this is the design that we generally use these days okay and there is something like again on this basis we divide into positive camber negative camber so when the camber line is above the chord line it is a positive camber and for negative camber when the camber line is below the chord line it's called a negative camber negative camber aerofoil all right uh, this also has different applications depending on the aircraft that is designed so we'll see this later okay so next topic we're going to discuss is wing shape wing area and uh, surface area of an aerofoil okay so first i'll take an example with a rectangular uh, aerofoil so that it's easy to understand suppose this is the aerofoil from the top view we'll consider this as B and this as C okay so the surface area of a rectangle is generally given by B into C Sim same application can be extended to a a tapered aerofoil maybe or any sort of aerofoil which has the similar dimensions Okay, so this is B and this chord line which is about 25% from the root, I mean the whole length from the root 25% C wing area equal to B into C that is wing span into chord. Okay, wing span into chord this is the wing area or the surface area of the wing now there is something called tip cord and root cord so we will take a aerofoil the cord length at the root is called your root cord is denoted by C of T the chord length at the tip is called tip chord and it's called it's denoted by C of T this is C of R sorry okay tip chord is denoted by C of T and at the tip of the wing aerofoil alright and uh, when we view the side section of an aerofoil something like this I already last page we mentioned that from leading edge to trailing edge this is called the chord and at 25% the whole length approximately at the maximum part of the aerofoil is called thickness of the aerofoil okay denoted by T simple T and then there's something called T by C ratio which is thickness by chord length into 100 percent into 100 this is denoted in terms of percentage okay and there's something called finesse ratio which is also t by c but not as a percentage it's just a simple number okay for example say T of an aircraft is 20 inches that is thickness 20 inches and length of the cord length of the cord is say 10 feet which is 120 inches so T by C is 20 by 120 1 by 6 
point one six is your thinness ratio because it's not a number. If you want the T by C ratio, thickness to chord ratio, it will be sixteen percent. Okay, I hope that's clear. So let's move on to the next topic that is aspect ratio. Very important aspect ratio. aspect ratio so it is given by span by chord wing span by chord okay so and uh, we'll just try to convert it into new formula span if you multiply up and down with the span span into chord all right so this will give you span square by wing area if you remember i'm just taking a triangle rectangular example this is c the length of the chord this is b the wing span of the chord so span square by wing area span is b b square by s is the surface area and if you want to change it into further span into chord by chord into chord equal to wing area by chord square that will give you s by c square so these all are formula for aspect ratio aspect ratio have uh, no, various uh, usage in terms of drag and all we'll discuss in the drag chapter and the lift chapter okay and uh, one point to note is suppose this is an example i'm giving say 10 is your chord 100 is your 100 feet is your 10 feet is your chord and 100 the aspect ratio is 1000 i mean uh, it is span by chord that is 100 by 10 okay the wing area is same though 1000 and if you take this 20 by 50 all right triangular so just just note a point here the aspect ratio for this is 10 right can you see span by chord 100 by 10 10 but the span is 50 here and the chord length is 20 so it is 2.5 so wings having same area may have different aspect ratio and that's the reason aspect ratio plays a crucial part in the lift and drag and further applications of a principles of flight of an aerodynamic foil all right so this is a key important point to remember okay now we'll discuss angle of attack angle of attack so i'll draw another foil okay and this is your relative airflow and if you remember this is the chord the angle this leading edge trailing edge angle of attack angle between relative airflow and chord line this is angle of attack okay now we'll discuss angle of incidence angle of incidence is angle between longitudinal axis of the airplane and the chord line though some aircraft these days have the ability to change this but generally in com commercial aviation angle of incidence angle of incidence cannot be changed okay cannot be changed so basically it's on the, during the manufacture of the aircraft the aircraft is since it's fixed to the fuselage the root of the wing so that is where the angle of incidence decide and decides the angle of attack parameters like minus 4 degrees to 16 degrees and further so on so lift is generated a slight lift